promoting a healthy environment. It's the air we breathe. Clean, safe water. Responsible management of our natural resources. We protect and restore. For a sustainable future. The environment matters. I'm like a kid in a candy store. I, I, I love it when I come out here and I see people looking at the roof. Why are there plants on the roof? The answer may surprise you. Plus, we came out here and it's covered in trash and now it looks great, so it feels good. Clean up on the Kanawha, a group of volunteers pitch in to help make it shine. Hello everyone and welcome to Environment Matters. I'm Kathy Costco with the West Virginia Department of Environmental Protection. Contamination from stormwater runoff is one of the leading causes of water pollution. It's especially a problem in cities where storm and sanitary sewers are combined into one system. One way to address the problem is to control the amount of runoff through the use of green infrastructure. The DEP's Sarah Alford joins us now with one project that's taking an innovative approach. Kathy, we're here at the rain garden outside DEP headquarters in Charleston. A rain garden helps absorb and filter stormwater runoff, reducing the amount that would go down the storm drain. A new project at Marshall University is taking that idea to a new level, literally several levels up to be exact. From the outside, the science building at Marshall University doesn't look that different from its neighbors. But step around back and go up a flight of stairs and you'll see what's so unusual. It's called a green roof, living plants actually growing on top of the roof structure. Here's Dr. Chuck Somerville, Dean of the College of Science with, well, the science. A green roof um, buffers when rain falls on an impermeable surface like a roof. Typically it would run right off. Um, places like Huntington have combined sewer uh, systems. So stormwater runs into the same system that sanitary sewage runs into. And when that system becomes overwhelmed in a big rain, it overtops the, the weirs and goes right out into the river. So uh, what we're trying to do is, is buffer stormwater so that it, it, it has a residence time on land or in soil or in plants before it hits the stormwater system. And when you have that buffering, you, you decrease the height of that hydrograph, water gets to the stormwater system slower, the stormwater system has a chance to respond and that combined sewage doesn't have to end up going out into the river. This is actually just a small demonstration project, something to show off the technology and help the university prepare for a much larger installation on the top floor of the new Applied Engineering Building across 3rd Avenue, currently under construction. And it's also going to be set up for experimental purposes. Um, there will be multiple drains on that roof and each of those drains will feed into a laboratory inside the building. So we'll be able to measure uh, water quality, water quantity coming off the roof. We'll be able to get an idea how, what, what the buffering capacity of that roof is, you know, how, when rain falls, how much of it we capture and how much of it eventually comes through. So we can, we can actually plant, uh, plant different types of plants in different plots, different sizes, um, different types of soil, and then see how that impacts the stormwater coming off the, the roof. But installing a green roof is more involved than just adding dirt and plants. With old buildings, older buildings, retrofitting is very hard because the green roof is very heavy. This one, uh, they're saying it could be up to 30 to 40 uh, pounds per square foot. So new construction is much easier. You can build it to withstand that. Older infrastructure, it's not as easy. So you have to make sure it holds the weight, uh, that it has no leaks, so you have to do flood testing on it. Uh, we had to actually put down two more barriers on top of the original roof. Uh, so it's not easy, but it is definitely doable. Plant selection is also important. The rooftop setting actually creates its own microclimate, depending on the location. Designers select plants that are shade tolerant or prefer full sun, but most importantly, plants need to be low maintenance and drought tolerant. And then there's the weeding. Uh, we'll have to continuously weed it. We'll have to make sure that um, the weeds that, are, that float in there do not overcrowd the plants that we've already planted, kill them out and kind of make the uh, rain garden or the green roof unpleasant looking. Um, so roughly once a week, once every two weeks, we're going to have somebody go out there and weed it, make sure there's nothing growing that shouldn't be there. Green roofs can also benefit the building in other ways. 
plants shield the roofing material from UV light, slowing its natural deterioration and extending its service life by as much as three times. Plants also provide a natural cooling effect, reducing utility costs in the summer, but that's not the biggest benefit. A lot of folks don't know where their water comes from and they don't know where it goes uh, when they flush the toilet or when it goes down the drain. So this is our opportunity to, to reach them about what happens to their storm water and why it's important that we, we try to, to manage it in the best way possible. And that learning experience extends to the university too. Well, a lot with doing with a lot of things with green infrastructure, uh, it's trial and error. So if we can practice on this one and keep this one up and running and, and the way it should be, then we'll just transfer that method, our knowledge to that, over to a bigger standard and it should should transfer fairly easily, just on a bigger scale. Travis hopes that Marshall's green roof project will help show that the technology is a viable option for stormwater control. Kathy, he also hopes to see more of them sprouting up around the state in the not too distant future. Thanks, Sarah. Construction on the new Applied Engineering Building and its green roof is scheduled to be completed in the spring of 2015. West Virginia University is also in the green roof business. There are four green rooftops installed on Brooks Hall. WVU's green roof project was constructed in 2007. These photos from 2009 show what a well-established green roof looks like. For more information on green roofs, you can check out our website, dep.wv.gov, and look under the Division of Water and Waste Management's Stormwater Programs page. For many of us, Saturday morning is a chance to sleep a little later, relax over a second cup of coffee, and generally chill out after a hectic week of work. But for one group of volunteers, a recent Saturday morning was anything but. The DEP's Ashley Hicks explains why. Early morning on the Kanawha River at St. Albans, and already some young volunteers are hard at work cleaning up trash from the banks. They're taking part in the DEP's annual Great Kanawha River Cleanup. This was the 24th year for the program. Last year, volunteers collected more than two tons of trash. Upstream at South Charleston, three generations of the Turner family pitched in to help. It's a good cause and it's just, uh, it's good fellowship too, it's a lot of fun. We got some younger people here and, uh, you know, it's enjoyable and gratifying. Bruce, his daughter Tara, and granddaughter Sydney, and several of their friends and co-workers made short work of the mess they found at the South Charleston boat ramp. I think it's important that shows pride in our state and what we want it to look like, which is hopefully clean and beautiful like it should be. Volunteers say it just shows how much good can be done when even a few people get together to work toward a common cause. We just heard about it from Bruce at work and it's a, just a great cause to get out here and clean up the river, so we thought we'd come out and help. We came out here and it's covered in trash and out looks great, so it feels good. I think it's really important. Um, in just a short amount of time this morning, we've already tackled all of this, and it looks a lot better. Um, if we can get more volunteers out to do this more frequently, maybe it would look nice. <laughs> Making a positive difference and having some fun, too. In South Charleston, I'm Ashley Hicks for Environment Matters. Crews also held cleanups at Winfield and Glen Ferris. Volunteers all received a free t-shirt for participating. The annual cleanups on the Ohio and Canal Rivers are part of the DEP's West Virginia Make It Shine program. Governor Earl Ray Tomlin honored participants from the DEP's Adopt a Highway statewide cleanup earlier this month at the Capitol during the kickoff of this year's Day to Serve. Day to Serve is a collective effort to strengthen communities through volunteer service. The governor told volunteers he hoped their experience ignited a lifelong desire to give back to neighbors and friends. Just ahead. It's an honor for us to win these awards this close together. It, it, I think it says a lot about the program. A DEP project gets some national attention. Plus, it's going to take action. It's going to take innovation. It's going to take imagination. First of all, it's going to take believing that it can be done. Overcoming inertia and moving forward with a sustainable growth strategy. The upcoming Create West Virginia conference is taking that message to a one-time boom town that's looking to rebound. Those stories and more when Environment Matters continue.